What's up guys, Tim here from Audio Tutor. So it turns out that no matter how many tutorials on mixing that you and I are watching, we're still making EQ mistakes in 2019. Here are my favorite top three EQ mistakes that you and I are still making this year. Number one on the list, right? And you're gonna be a culprit for this, I'm sure, because I am a culprit for this. Number one is adding an EQ to every track. For, for no reason, just adding an EQ. So you've just finished recording a bongo drum that's going to sit in the background of your chorus, and before even listening back to the recording, you just add an EQ plugin. Because, you know, EQ plugin. Well, without listening to the track and without having a problem to fix with an EQ plugin, I have no idea why you have just added an EQ plugin, right? And I'm not getting at you, I do this too, this is exactly the same for me, I just add an EQ. Oh, I'm, well, I'm going to need to EQ it. Well, we don't know that yet. And this, this comes under something way more important, which is the power of working with intent. So if you work with intent, you're going to think, okay, this bongo drum is sounding kind of boomy around 400 hertz, and you're going to grab an EQ, and you're going to turn down 400 hertz. However... If you just grab an EQ before having a problem, you're trying to fix something that isn't even there. And then you get into doing things like, I, I'm a culprit for this, you, you turn the Q up to like 100, so it's really, really narrow, and then you boost a frequency by like 24 dB. And then you start going, oh, that doesn't sound very nice. Well, of course it doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> You've just boosted a frequency by 24 dB. It's going to sound horrible, right? And you're going to start finding problems that didn't even exist in the first place. So don't just grab an EQ. Make sure you're working with intent. Number two on the list, and this is very popular as well, is keeping low frequencies that you don't need. Right, so say you've recorded an acoustic guitar that's like a rhythm section that's going to sit kind of further back in the mix. You don't need the low end of that recording, right? And this, this has become kind of controversial because we keep going back and forth and back and forth on whether you should high pass everything or not. And so lots of people make the mistake of high passing everything in their session, right? They just grab everything, high pass everything, like, you know, up to 100 hertz. And then they wonder why things are starting to sound thin and tinny and there, right? So that is a mistake. However, on the other end of the scale, you do want to make sure that you're making room for those low-end instruments. If you're keeping all the low-end information in all your acoustic guitar tracks, you're going to run out of space, going to run out of room for your, your bass guitar and your, your kick drum and your toms. So you want to make sure you're creating room by getting rid of those low frequencies that you don't need. The third and final mistake that we are still making in 2019 is using an EQ when what we really need to use is a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor. All right, so I'm, let me break this down in, into an example. Say you've, you've just recorded this lovely lady singing a song and her voice is beautiful, but every time she hits this one note, for some reason the microphone has picked up this one frequency, it rings out and it's not nice to hear. It's nothing wrong with her voice, nothing wrong with the microphone. It's more of just the way they communicated with each other has just brought out this one frequency that kind of rings and annoys you in the recording, right? The mistake here would be to grab an EQ, find that frequency, let's say it's 4,000 hertz, right, as an example. You would find 4,000 hertz and go, ah, that's that frequency, and turn it down. If you just turn it down for the whole recording, you're then losing things that could have been nice at 4,000 hertz in other parts of the song. Remember, it was only when she sung this one note that things sounded a bit off, that we didn't like that ringing frequency. So what you need in this scenario is a multiband compressor or a dynamic EQ. And with that tool, you can then focus in on 4,000 hertz, and you can tell this plugin to say, okay, when when the volume of 4,000 hertz gets too much, we're going to turn it down. But only when it gets too loud. When, when 4,000 hertz gets too loud, we're going to turn it down. Right? So you see the difference. A dynamic EQ can turn it down when it's overbearing. An EQ, a regular EQ, will turn it down all the time, and we don't always want that. So that's the third mistake, using an EQ when you really need to use a dynamic EQ. 
All right, so there's our three EQ mistakes that we are still making in 2019. Number one was adding an EQ plugin to everything without even thinking about it. Number two was not getting rid of low-end information that we don't need, right, and creating that space for other low-end instruments. And number three was using a regular EQ when what you really need is a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed those three quick little fire mistakes. Um, if you are looking to get started in the world of recording and mixing, you don't really know what equipment you might need to get going on that though, um, I actually have a full guide to all the equipment you need to get going um, on an affordable budget as well. So things like microphones, um, monitors, audio interfaces, all that good stuff. Check it out, it's absolutely free from me to you. It's 25 pages long, there is a link down there in the description. Click on that, um, give me your email address so I can send it over to you and enjoy. All right, guys, I will see you real soon on the next video. All right, have a great week.